everyone, this is Juanita. I'm here at Dash Sports with Kimberly Grogan. And today we are going to spend some time talking about the importance of supportive footwear. And it is incredibly important because I'm gonna tell you something. As a physical therapist and treating lots of different types of people, whether you're an athlete or whether you just like to walk a lot, um, one of the things that I talk about constantly is having good shoes. Now, there are lots of reasons for having good shoes. First of all, let's talk about comfort, right? We need to be comfortable because if our shoes are uncomfortable, we're not gonna be active, we're not gonna get out there, we're not gonna enjoy the things that we wanna enjoy. So we definitely want to talk about comfort, first of all, but also safety. There are a lot of shoes out there that people think, oh, these are great, they're comfortable, but they're really not safe for you, especially if you're senior and you have a little bit of difficulty getting around. Being safe is incredibly important, and I talk about that quite frequently with my patients too. But one of the most common reasons that I talk about shoes and, and awesome footwear is because of the health consequences that can occur when you have poor shoe wear. And uh, I'm sure, Kimberly, that you see that all the time coming into your, uh, your beautiful place of business here. And if you haven't been to Dash Sports, it's right downtown Claremont. Beautiful new facility. How long have you guys been here? Not too long. Since July 10th. We've since been oh, okay, since July 10th. So pretty new, pretty new. But, well, we met you. but you're not new to the community. Right. You've been in the community for a long time. 13 years, yes. 13 years, because they were previously uh, geared for multi-sports and they were up in the National Training Center and now they've decided to grace us all in downtown Claremont with their presence. So Kimberly, tell us a little bit about why people come in here, what kind of shoes they're looking for. And I know that there's a variety, but, but in general, what is it that you see when people have poor footwear? So we see everyone from super fast um, athletes, runners, triathletes, um, all the way to people just needing good footwear to walk every day. Mm -hmm. So whether they like to stand in their kitchen and cook a lot, um, yes. whether they like to um, walk their dog, um, all of those are good reasons to get um, good fitted footwear. Um, so we see people who um, need a lot more support than what they have. What, um, what you get off most shelves um, doesn't have support. And right. um, sometimes as we age, we need more support. Um, sometimes it's to the outside of the shoe, sometimes it's on the inside of the shoe. And so we assess that and we look at um, how a person walks and we wanna get people walking most naturally. Right. So uh, there are a few parameters that we look at with the shoe um, that a lot of people don't need to think about with the shoe, but we do in order to get them in the best one um, for them. Sure, sure. Now, when you say more naturally, or you like people to walk naturally, you know, so sometimes when people get shoes and they don't fit properly, they end up changing the way that they're walking. And then if they change the way they're walking, that can create ankle pain and knee pain and hip pain and even back pain and even neck pain. They don't realize it, but everything is connected. And so when you, what do you watch them walk with their shoes and without their shoes? Like how do you determine what's a natural way for them to walk? So we actually start watching them as soon as they start walking in the door, um, just because we naturally watch people walk all the time, sure. whether we're out and about or in the store. And so we watch them as they walk in, how they're walking in their shoes. We kind of assess um, if the shoe, we can tell almost from um, a little ways away, if the shoe even is the right size. Um, and so we can assess those things. Um, we go through and watch them walk um, without uh, shoes on if they're able to. Mm -hmm. um, watch them um, as we put them through a few little movements, um, measure their feet with an actual Brannock, and then we uh, assess what type of shoe they might be in. So whether it's a stability shoe, a neutral shoe, um, one that has support on, more on the outside, um, and then we go pick out um, shoes for them to try on. Many times people are um, up a half a size to a size from what they think they are. Oh. Um, no, but especially women, right? We don't want to admit that our shoes might be a little bit bigger than we thought that they were. Yes. I, I, I'm definitely guilty of yes. that. I a lot of people are, that. and I always say, so if your shoes aren't comfortable, you're not going to be as active, right? Right. right. So <laughs> if your shoes are too short, you're not going to be as active. Sure. So I always say it's always better to go up a shoe size than a clothes size because oh, your shoes are too true. short. Oh, that's good. So, that's a great point. Uh, I'm going to remember that. 
So a lot of times, I mean, we do sometimes turn the boxes around so people don't even see the shoe size because it's one of those things we just wanted to get you in one. And so we look at the shape of the foot. It's a big part of um, what we do as well. So um, a lot of people are in shoes that don't actually fit the shape of their foot. So if you all want to, you can look straight down at your shoes right now, look at your feet, see how your foot is shaped, and then look at the bottom of your shoe and see if the bottom of your shoe matches your foot shape. Um, okay. If it doesn't, then it may not, it most likely isn't the right shoe for you, um, especially in the walking gait, um, because we do spend the most time on the ground in the walking gait, um, and so the shoe needs to be supportive the whole of the whole foot through the whole motion. Um, and so that's one of the things we look at. Um, and most shoes on the shelf, um, I'll pick one out that is a common um, brand to get off the shelf. If you see right here how narrow it is um, in this midfoot here, most people's feet are not shaped like this. Um, most people's feet um, do um, are more shaped like this, a little bit wider um, through the midfoot. Um, and so most of the shoes on the shelf are more shaped like this. And that is why a lot of people get pain and they're not as supportive on the inside. Right, now with, with a shoe like this, would this accommodate somebody with like a higher arch? Is that what that's looking for? And a lot of people don't have high arches though. They're, especially as we get older, our right. arches tend to fall a little bit. Right, so, so and even a lot of people with high arches, um, it's, we talk about the volume from top to bottom as well. Um, and so a lot of people with high arches also need a high volume shoe um, from top to bottom. So we look at that um, to make sure that their foot fits in um, you know, uh, the height wise as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, right, but this one is great for um, that quick off the ground um, running motion, sure. but not necessarily the walking motion. Right. So, because our, our feet are different when we're running versus when we're walking. I mean, the shape changes uh, differently. Yes, so, how, yeah. it, how it connects with the ground exactly. and um, goes through that motion. Exactly. So. One thing I didn't mention before, which I know you and I have talked about, which is really important, is that shoes can really help you with your balance. And, you know, if you have a shoe that's, that puts you off balance, then it doesn't matter how great you seem to walk. You're always fighting the shoe in order to do that. Now, what kind of shoe would, would help that? Just a shoe that fits the shape of your foot or are there special shoes that help with that? Um, well, that is one of the factors um, is having a shoe that fits your foot so that you do feel most um, secure in the shoe. Um, but it's also um, if, like I was saying, if somebody needs stability, mm -hmm. um, like this one is high, built up quite high on the inside. So if your foot rolls mm -hmm. in, this one will help um, keep it most neutral. So if the foot rolls in like onto the inside, this one's gonna correct it um, neutrally. Um, and so, uh, but we do have a lot of people who are just neutral and need a good base. So this one is somebody who's gonna walk just straight to back, not roll in, but they may roll out. So if there's a um, tendency to blow, what we say, blow out the side, the outside wall of the shoe, um, something like this um, might be a good one um, for those, um, those people. Um, so the stability aspect, the just being able to walk naturally without um, hitches or swinging a leg or um, things like that, uh, it depends on how, you know, what is going on. Sometimes it's from the ankle. Mm -hmm. So we can see how the ankle, um, the laxity of the ankle, um, how what that foot needs, um, how it travels from the ankle up the foot. Um, if it rolls in, it's going to need one thing, rolls out another thing, and then straight up the middle, something different. So, I mean, we have some really cool success stories of sure. um, people who have come in, you know, I actually had a lady yesterday, limping and, and all um, from plantar fasciitis um, oh, yeah. in her foot um, that can be caused for many different um, things. And um, the first pair of shoes she put on, it was night and day from the way she came in. So um, I've had a, a gentleman recently um, who we put in some stability shoes. He was very close to needing a walker um, oh. because of how bent over and sure. all that he was from not having enough support. We put him in a supportive pair of shoes and he just about took off running. Oh, um, that's amazing. Tears that's in fantastic. his eyes yes. and just um, really gave him a lot more life, um, a lot more, you know, 
to be able to be active um, longer in life um, just because of putting a good um, foundation on his feet. Um, he was able to uh, to really, I mean, take off running almost. That's amazing. I mean, it's not surprising to me. That's certainly something, like I said, that I talk to my patients about because it's so incredibly important to have the right shoe. Now, I've heard something, and I don't mean to just throw this at you, but I would like for you to either dispel it or confirm it. It's, it's a, a rumor that I've heard. I don't want to say myth yet because I don't know if it's true or not. But, um, okay, so I heard that if you go to, like, the outlet stores, to buy your shoes that really the shoes are already like halfway through their life before you even purchase them because of the shelf time that they've had is that true do shoes have a shelf time a limited shelf time or what is that they like? do at some um they do um and especially in florida because of our humidity okay so most of the shoes are made with um a foam at the bottom which mm -hmm. is great um because it makes them soft um you know more cushioned i wouldn't say soft all of them because um, some of them we do need more um, structure to them, um, but the humidity in the air does get into the bottom of um, the shoe, and so just like a sponge, mm -hmm. if you're to wet it and then lay it out and let it dry, it hardens, and mm -hmm. so um, there is a shelf life to the um, cushioning, um, and just like if you have them at home or if they've been in the store too long, um, then they're going to expire um, at some point. So. Um, you know, what we do when people are coming in for a new shoe is we look at the tread on the shoe. We actually take the insole out and feel on the inside to see how much it's worn. Okay. Um, but um, the, uh, the outlet mall uh, scenario is true. And then they also, a lot of times, will um, have hey, shoes yes, sir, that, um, yes, sir. Hey, shoes that are uh, defective or um, oh, okay. are not perfect. Um, and so uh, yeah. that's one reason that we kind of, you know, encourage people to stay away from that, that life stage. Well, right, because in reality, if you if you save twenty dollars on a pair of shoes, you know how much damage are you doing to your body uh, by saving that twenty dollars? I mean, it's just, it's not worth it. Uh, definitely not worth it because you're going to be paying a lot more than that in medical bills, even just going to the doctor. Oh, my knee hurts. Uh, sometimes we don't put that together with shoes and, and the way that you're walking. Uh, but it's certainly you know, it's an important like part of that, and we should you know, always gonna, consider yeah, that. My, yes. my yeah. 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 Today, so, what are some so other tomorrow, what are some mistakes that people know, make incredible. when they buy shoes? So I'm sure some, some people come in here to you and they say, "Okay, I want this kind of shoe. I want this type of shoe," um, okay. and and you look at them and you're like, "No, no, no, that's completely wrong for you." What are what are some mistakes that people have or perform when they're looking for shoes? Um, sometimes it is getting uh, wanting a shoe that's too little, too low in cushion. Okay. Um, and so we know that as we age, um, our fatty pads and all on the bottom of our feet um, do lessen. And so we do need cushion. Mm -hmm. um, also, most of the floors that we walk on um, in Florida, we have a lot of concrete, theme yes. parks, things like that, um, a lot of tile, a lot of um, hardwood. Um, in houses, things like that. So, um, and then sand is another. Oh, place that's a that whole we different. Have. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> but, um, but we do need some cushion, um, and so we do. For some people, they do uh, need a very flexible shoe. Yes. Um, and so we try and marry that um, need of flexibility with enough cushion. So um, sometimes they do. Um, the shoe may look like it's a, a low um, cushion shoe but it actually has quite a bit. And so just by knowing the shoes, um, then we're able to help the person get the right one, um, giving enough cushion. So that's one, but a lot of people do get the wrong size when they okay. fit themselves. Um, they don't understand uh, how these shoes are made and how they're supposed to fit. So um, these companies spend a lot of time and money on research sure. um, on these shoes. Right. Um, ones that are in the big box stores and things like that that are the same brands are not always the same caliber of shoes um, and so uh, but they do put the um, the foot uh, normalized foot in the shoe and where the widest point of the foot should be um, the person should have about a half a thumb width to a thumb width at the end a half a thumb width to a thumb width at the end of the at shoe. At the end of the shoe. Okay, so so like when you're when you're measuring your kids' shoes, right? When their kids are little, you just stick your fingers in there to yeah. see how far. Okay, so it should be yeah. a thumb width or About a half, half a thumb width okay. to a thumb width. Um, 
And, uh, and so that puts the widest part of the foot over the widest part of the shoe, okay. which means that the toe bones, which is the widest part, mm -hmm. have enough room. Um, and so all the nerves and veins that go in between the toes have enough room to work and do what they're supposed to do. Okay. So. All right. That's great. Okay. Now, we are in Florida, mm -hmm. and people do not like to wear tennis yeah, shoes great. all yeah. the time, yeah. Yeah. especially, yeah. you know, yeah. okay, cool. some and, older uh, ladies that I that I know and have right. treated oh, for a long time, a feet, they yeah. talk yeah. about yeah. how sweaty yeah. their feet get, yeah. or they'll yeah. have these beautiful yeah. pedicures, yeah. right? They want to show them off to the world, but they wear completely inappropriate sandals. Yes. And, and I worry about them and I tell them frequently to throw their sandals away because of the safety issue that we had talked about a little bit earlier. Um, but I see you have a, a ton of, of sandals here. So tell us what to look for in a sandal and maybe show us you know, what would be a good sandal to wear here in Florida for both, I mean, women and men, but I get it more from the ladies than I do the men generally. <laughs> so that is um, something we get lots. But I have lots of shoes at home, and I'm not yes. ever gonna work, da, da, da. And it's like, okay, if they're not working, then logic says to throw them away, or to give them away, or something. Because if you're gonna end up in hurt where you can't be as active as you want to be, then there's no sense in wearing them, even if they're as pretty as they can be. Um, so we've got um, a couple of brands that we carry. Um, Olakai is one of them, um, where you can see that they have a nice good arch to them. Um, these can be worn in and out of water, um, very, very durable shoes, mm -hmm. um, very, very popular brand for us. Um, they do have closed toed shoes, they do have different ones and we have, we do carry some of those. Um, so that people can um, continue their good fit wear into everything that they wear. Um, we also carry a brand, um, Spinco, which they um, started, this company started many years ago making insoles, supportive insoles, and their most popular supportive insole they then put into a sandal. Um, and just some footwear. And so we have lots of different versions of these, men's and women's, um, same with the Olakai, um, that people can um, put on their feet, feel the support, know that they are doing something good for their feet, um, but also looking cute and, um, and uh, being supportive and all for their... Uh, you know what? You just, you do not see, you just don't see sandals like this just from off the shelf. You no. just don't. Not with this kind. I mean, it really looks like the shape of your foot. Uh, th those flat shoes, terrible, terrible for you. And then they usually have like slick bottoms, which are terrible for you as far as balance and walking. I mean, I'm, even younger people, I know a lot of younger people who have slipped because they've been in the wrong shoes, especially sandals. Or, you know, these, these what are these called? Right here, the thong? Yeah, is that what they're yeah. called? Okay, that's <laughs> not sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that portion is, I mean, this is durable. This yes. is gonna last. Yeah. Whereas those other, you know, those cheap shoes, again, is it worth, you know, saving a couple bucks to put your safety at risk and your health because if your feet hurt or your knees hurt, oh, yeah. you, you're not gonna, like, you, like we've said a couple times, you're just not gonna be active. You're not gonna be doing the things that you wanna do. So. And to your point of young people in them, it's never too early to start taking care of your feet. It's true. So those are, these are the things that carry you, carry your weight, carry you if you're a woman and you're pregnant, they carry you throughout your life and you need them to be uh, good, um, you need them to be pain free as much as possible. So it's never too early to start. So we do carry kids shoes, we do carry small sizes of these, we can get small sizes of the Olakai, um, because it's good for kids to understand um, and for parents to put the kids in good shoes. We fit a lot of um, cross country runners, um, a lot of um, young people who are putting miles on their legs and their feet um, and that's super important to have a relationship with people who can help you through um, that you may have injuries you may have um, uh, just questions about how to stay healthy um, through running um, and we are a good resource you know your local store is a good resource for um, for asking those questions absolutely great and I see so we've talked a lot about shoes but you have tons of other equipment or, or uh, tools for you, for your feet. I see you've got these, those socks, they're called, uh, well, I've always called them. Oh, the for the, socks. Yeah, the yes. socks. Yes. Oh, yeah, you got it right here. Good. Yep. For plantar fasciitis, this is the first thing that I recommend for my patients because when you sleep, 
it will help to keep you in a stretched position uh, and you heal when you sleep and so these are amazing uh, I did not I did not know that you sold them but now I do so next time when I when I see somebody with plantar fasciitis this is the first always the first thing I recommend but now I have a resource that you guys can go to right you don't have to order them online you can come right here to dash sports and see what works for you best as far as size because the sizing can be a little funny especially if you're if you have bigger calves like I do or I used to because I used to be a runner so my calves are like uh, gigantic and so it's hard to get the right size but so that's great yes. yeah yeah so this is one thing we say almost everybody in Florida needs one of these in their house because at some time you're going to experience you're going to walk on um, sand too long you're going to pull something in your foot from walking barefoot or um, you know the grass or whatever and if you put this on for just a few nights um, once you feel that twinge and the tightness in the morning um, you put this on for a few nights and it can help take care of it before it becomes a chronic problem yeah absolutely agreed so. I have two. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes, yeah. One for each foot. <laughs> and then you're always like, where is that thing? I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. so. And then you have other things too. Well, I know, yes. You have a ton of, of insoles over there. Yes. I see that. And so for people who need, um, who have to wear certain shoes uh, for work boots um, or, you know, non-slip or they're like, I just got these shoes. I don't, you know, but they said I need something. Right. We have a myriad of different um, insoles. Um, higher, lower arch, more support, less support, more cushioning, less cushioning. Um, we hear many times, and there have been people who come in with things stacked on top of each other yes. in their shoe, um, or I've gone to go get this brand from the over the counter, and I paid a lot of money for them, and they felt good for like two weeks. Right. These we know people have been in for eight months to a year, um, and, and been super, super happy because they have stiff pieces. And so that's different than a lot of them that you get off the shelf. Mm -hmm. If you think about your weight um, coming down on these, you need some stiffness to it um, so that it holds up the weight. So these right. are not bendable in the middle very much. They're very, very um, stiff and um, support for a long time. Sure, sure. And, and then are you, you go through the same process of finding the insole as you do the shoe as far as like looking at the, the shape of the foot, mm -hmm. how people walk and things like that? Yes. Fantastic. Uh, More right. fun stuff. Stuff love. for plantar fasciitis. I Nobody ever socks. wants. <laughs> Nobody socks. ever wants um, plantar fasciitis, but it does happen. So we have some good, um, fantastic things that we've actually tried out ourselves because um, we go through it. Um, and uh, so we have some fun stuff, some stuff that'll give relief pretty quickly. Um, so then you can go about and be active because sometimes what is best for plantar fasciitis is being active and getting that blood flow and keeping it. So, right. Okay. Um, yeah, a little fun things to roll your foot on at night. Um, Who doesn't want a foot massage at night, right? These things don't work unless you use them. <laughs> so we hear many times, oh yeah, I want to use it at home. Okay, we'll use it and it'll help. So lots of little things that we can help and we, um, we uh, teach you how to use in here. Um, it's not just a, you know, send you on your way, but we actually sit down and teach you how to use it. So, right, right. Um, and okay, so not only that, right? So we got lots of equipment, we got lots of shoes. The, definitely if you're looking for shoes, I think if, if there's one takeaway from today, don't just default to going to a, a, somewhere that may have some tennis shoes that you like. Instead, you need to come somewhere, get fitted, know the, kind, the proper kind of shoe, have somebody look at the way you walk, that's gonna help you with your safety, with your balance, with just your activity level, because what you know what it's like when your shoes are not so good and you've been out walking all day and you know how exhausted you feel at the end of the day. But if you have a good pair of shoes, a steady pair of shoes, then at the end of the day, it's a whole different world. Like you were talking about that one guy, you know, that one gentleman with the walker, uh, or almost who needed a walker. You know, it just makes a world of difference. But so you guys do all of that, which is great here at the store, but you don't only do that because I noticed in the in your window that you also sponsor walks or runs, yes. right, during yes. the week. But let's talk a little bit about that. What does that look like and, and who can come and, okay. and what to expect? So we have a free um, run every Wednesday night and we always have a speaker beforehand. Um, so we always do it Facebook Live as well so you can watch it then or after. Um, so we have speakers talking about motivation or training or racing or um, you know, just being healthy and active, um, many different topics uh, mm -hmm. we're going to go through in the next weeks um, and years. 
And um, so that's a free run at 6.30 um, on Wednesday nights. Um, we also um, are a part of Park Run, which is a free 5K that happens every Saturday oh, yes. in Claremont. Um, it is a um, worldwide organization, Park Run is. And so you go online and go to parkrun.us and register and bring your barcode and you get a free time run every single week. Um, so it's a great group of people um, and you don't have to run it. You can walk it. Right. Um, we have a lady. There are a lot of walkers. I've been I've been there several times and I know it's a first of all it's beautiful. It's a beautiful course. I've always had the most beautiful courses. But there are a lot of a lot of they're very, very, very fast yep. people, usually the kids, so get well behind them. <laughs> and then and then there are people who take, you know, it's a it's a five K, so it's three point two 3.1. My husband's training for a marathon. I've got two of my brains. Yeah, so uh, 3.1, right, a mile run or walk. But, you know, they'll take an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. But you know what? It doesn't matter because if you're the last person there, there are still people there cheering you on. It's amazing. It's a great opportunity. But tell me about your run. Is it a 5K that you do on Wednesdays? On Wednesday nights, it's about 30 minutes. Okay, okay. Every so just whatever you do can do in 30 that. minutes. Yes. And do yeah. you have a lot of walkers come to that yes, too? Yes, we do. Okay, awesome. Yep. And then we have um, Thursday mornings. I meet here at 5 a.m. Um, to go for a run as well. So that's 45 minute run, um, run walk at 5 a.m. Okay. Um, and uh, then we also have a run group. Um, so that is a coach run group. It's $25 a month for the um, for the uh, registration. And um, so the coach will go through and see what your plans are, what your goals are. And um, the runs there are Monday nights at 6, the Wednesday night at um, 6.30, and then Saturday mornings at 7. Um, okay. So, yeah, so we've got lots of ways to meet and greet, you know, get together with people who um, want an active lifestyle and um, encourage each other and learn. So yeah. that's our plan. It's great. I think that it's a great community outreach because... As we get older, too, our, our friend group tends to shrink, and it gets harder to meet people and know like people who are interested in the same types of things that you are. So if you're interested in being active and, and you know picking up walking, even if you haven't done it before and you just haven't really known where to go, like this is a great resource for you to do that. And we as physical therapists from Four Corners absolutely always are encouraging active lifestyles and looking for ways that you can be more active and more social both in the community so th that's a great opportunity for people to take advantage of so um, I think that, that that's all for me do you have anything else you would like to say Kimberly? I don't think so thank you so much for the partnership oh, yes, to yes. be in the same area we're both down yes. here in downtown Claremont so yes. lots of fun stuff going on um, down here so if you haven't been to downtown Claremont in a while come on down there's great Absolutely. places to eat good yes. lunch walk on the trail um, you know lots of lots of things to do down here and see yeah, and then if you need physical therapy, of course, yes. <laughs> come to Four Corners Health and Rehabilitation because we are pretty much right across the street. Um, okay, well, I think that that's it for today. So it's been lovely getting Thank to you. know you, and hopefully everybody uh, knows a lot more about their shoes. If you, if you haven't and you just are catching the tail end of this, go back, watch all of it because it's really great. A lot of wonderful information. So that's it for today. Everybody, you have a wonderful day, and we'll see you soon. All right, take care. Bye-bye.